Good morning, this is Alamon, and welcome back for more Kerbal Space Program. I'd like to show off this mod, Tweak Scale, originally created by Gaius Goodspeed, currently maintained by Biotronic. Now with this mod, you can change the sizes of most parts in the game. You can see there are those, uh, what are they called, FL-100 fuel tanks, blown up to 5 meter scale. We see the, uh, the NASA uh, side engines, super, super tiny underneath, and there are a few more surprises in store. Alright, so let's launch this and see how it works. Some pretty awesome thrust to weight ratio. I noticed that when you scale engines down, um, they still tend to have quite a lot of thrust, and sometimes that can be a bit overpowered. Still such a beautiful game. I'm using Astronomer's Visual Pack, and it just enhances the game so very much compared to stock. But I noticed I was going a bit too quickly, so I slowed down. But then I started dipping too close to the horizon, which wasn't really so much preferable to that. So then I tried to use thrust vectoring to get me back up, and then I tried kind of wiggling around, trying to get better, uh, get, get my wings to bite into the wind more, but nope. So here's launch attempt number two. Another aggressive turn off of the launch pad, but I uh, am able to push back in the other direction again, get things stabilized. And we go back up into the air. And this time I am not quite as much of a lead foot on the throttle. We get some oscillation, but nothing too bad. And indeed, we uh, get into a, um, a ballistic trajectory, and the moon is rising. So we're just going to go straight into our transmooner injection. All right, we have achieved orbit, and just see how quickly uh, that goes up. That thrust-to-weight ratio is incredible. So here we go, on our way to the moon. Those lovely clouds. Such a great addition to the game. All right, here we go. We still have a bit of fuel left in this stage. And it slows us down a great deal, but it's not able to completely bring us to a stop. All right, there go the fairings. And you'll notice that this lander may look a lot like the, uh, I believe I've heard people call it the Toyota Corolla of Kerbal Space Program, just your super basic lander, but actually it's much smaller. All of the parts there are the uh, 62 and a half centimeter scale. You'll notice the parachute on top is the tiny, tiny, tiny parachute. Um, it cannot be scaled with tweak scale. So it's like this gigantic hat on top of our command pod. So here we go, slowing ourselves down. And there goes our massive toy rocket, kaboom. And then we come in for a nice Gentle landing, aiming for a place that's a little flatter, perhaps. Get our landing legs out, and settling in nice and gently. Three, two, one, and I accidentally hit Z. And because of the incredible thrust-to-weight ratio, that engine, by the way, is the large NASA engine, which is already overpowered, and on small scale, it's unbelievable how overpowered it is. But now we have our nice gentle landing. Here's the uh, tiny, tiny, tiny ladder, also unscalable. So that is its stock size to really give a sense of how tiny this lander really is. It's only about uh, the size of what, about th three Kerbals tall? So of course, as you do, we have to plant a flag. And Phil Rig here is quite proud of his little toy rocket ship. Toy rockets are fun. Pose for a nice little picture here, and it's time to go home. Back up our teensy teensy tiny little ladder. See that parachute again, like I said, that is the stock size for that tiny parachute, and it is dwarfing the rocket. And you could see, um, there's no way that a Kerbal could fit inside that command pod. But somehow he does. Just the clown car more than the 
Toyota Corolla of Landers. We had a little bit of jiggling around there because I forgot to turn on SAS, but then there we go. We very quickly uh, are able to push ourselves hard enough to get a good apoapsis. And once we had attained orbit, I decided to just take Phil Rig out a little more just to toy around with this rocket in zero G and again get a sense for that relative scale between the Kerbal and his tiny toy rocket that somehow he can fit inside. But it's time to go back home. So here's our uh, trans Kerbin injection, and you can see uh, the camera glitches out a lot with this mod. I just I imagine it has something to do with the fact that I made the parts super small. Anyway, I'm still getting used to Ferrum Aerospace and Deadly Reentry. I was trying to do uh, some arrow breaking, nothing too crazy, but I did actually dip way too deep into the atmosphere. So I thought, uh, okay, that's looking pretty hot, so maybe let's uh, fire that engine back up, slow ourselves down as much as we can, but it didn't have that much fuel left, so that was an issue. So we separated, and now we have the heat shield, so I thought, all right, we're fine now. The heat shield will protect us, everything's good, but wow, that's a lot of heat. That's an incredible amount of heat. Oh gosh, and then I noticed that we weren't quite pointed toward the retrograde vector, and I thought it must be an issue with the SAS. So I thought, you know what, let's just toggle that off, and I'm sure that the uh, aerodynamics will fix that for us. Nope. It's that parachute. I wasn't able to scale it down, and it must have been the most massive thing on the ship. So now we're tumbling, facing completely the wrong way. I can't get the heat shield back in the uh, direction that we're traveling. And we're in this uncontrollable spin. We have no more electrical power. Amazingly, the command pod did not blow up. I thought for sure that it was going to, but uh, they must build them very robustly. So here we are, just tumbling freely through the air. No power. We have three parts, the command pod, the heat shield, and one of the three little baby landing legs is left. So it looks like it's probably time to uh, start writing that eulogy for Phil Rig. He was a good Kerbal. I've used him a lot in uh, this save file. But I don't want him to die yet. Not on my watch. So we EVA him at the last second. Let him ragdoll. And uh, strangely enough, landing on their heads is the safest thing for Kerbins. I guess, uh, you know, that's why you always wear a helmet. And we have, once again... Cheated death in Kerbal Space Program. Good job, Phil Rig. Again, this mod has been Tweak Scale, maintained by Biotronic. I've been Alamon. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the Kraken bite. Bye bye.